How's it going, guys? So a slightly difficult slash unusual question for rheumatology slash internal medicine. I will tell you exactly what you need to know, okay? Even if you think you instantly know the diagnosis, relax, okay? There's actually some value here. It's not what you think. So before we get started, I will be a quick asshole. I'll tell you to subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. Really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L, M-A-N underscore medical. Link is down below. Find me on Telegram. Recently created a Telegram group and channel. Links are down below. And you can become a membership of this channel by hitting the join button slash link down below. Now, how about I start the fucking question here where we've got this 45-year-old dude, four-month history, increasing soreness in his hands, BMI 26. Fasting glucose, 130 milligrams per deciliter. Normal should be 72 to 99 milligrams per deciliter. Impaired fasting glucose is 100 to 125. Uh, diabetes mellitus is 2 fasting glucose measurements, 126 or greater, um, or any one random glucose, 200 milligrams per deciliter or greater, or an HbA1c measurement, 6.5% or greater. You can have a non-diabetic glucose measurement, but an HbA1c, 6.5% or greater, and that's diabetes mellitus. So this guy is in the diabetic range. We have one measurement, but he's in the diabetic range at least for his glucose. Physical examination shows darkening of the skin in the forearms. We think of various uh, differential diagnoses, such as could this be Addison disease, Cushing's? Could this be uh, niacin deficiency, pellagra? Could this be hemochromatosis? Could this be solar elastoses? He works as a prison worker. We think of things like tuberculosis. Uh, does he use his hands? Now look, when you get a hand x-ray on USMLE and you say, no idea what I'm looking at, I suck at radiology, take two steps back, chill the fuck out for two seconds, and you just say, look, is there DIP involvement, distal interphalangeal joint involvement? That's the first thing you should do, okay? Any hand x-ray, you just say, is there DIP involvement? If yes, which in this case, rheumatoid arthritis, wrong fucking answer, okay? So that's value. I mean, you instantaneously eliminate RA, all right? Because there's DIP involvement. RA does not affect DIPs, at least on USMLE, okay? It'll be PIP, MCP. So in the picture here, in the image, we've got Habertin nodes, osteophytes of the DIPs. If they're of the uh, PIPs, those are uh, Bauche or Bouchard nodes. Uh, in rheumatoid arthritis, we get bout and air deformity or swan neck deformity. Uh, I want to keep this clip concise. The point is, at least initially, we have an osteoarthritic picture, okay? Nine out of 10 uh, questions where you get DIP involvement, the answer is osteoarthritis, which is degenerative joint disease, which in this case is the wrong fucking answer, okay? Now it's like, ooh, wow, like what's the catch? Like, tell me, all right, I'll tell you. So here's the thing. This guy has bronze diabetes, which is hemochromatosis. It's darkening of the skin, hemosiderin deposition, okay, from iron. He has impaired fasting glucose. Well, in this case, it's actually diabetic uh, level glucose due to iron deposition in the tail of the pancreas where the islet cells are. And then you can get a myriad of other findings. You can get infertility, you can get um, cardiomyopathy, restrictive or dilated, and you can get pseudogout. Holy shit. And pseudogout, calcium pyrophosphate deposition disease, this is our correct answer, choice B, will present one of two ways on USMLE, either a monoarthritis of a large joint, such as the knee, or it's going to present as an OA, an osteoarthritis-like picture in a patient with hemochromatosis or primary hyperparathyroidism. So hemochromatosis and primary hyperparathyroidism are two of the biggest risk factors for the development of pseudogout. They're rhomboid-shaped crystals. They're blue under polarized light, okay, positively birefringent. In contrast, monosodium urate gout uh, would be needle-shaped, uh, yellow, negatively birefringent crystals. Uh, gout uh, can affect the hands, uh, but when we have this picture here, okay, DIP involvement, an OA-like presentation in a patient with hemochromatosis or primary hyperparathyroidism, Answer is pseudogout, not degenerative joint disease, not OA, okay? Very challenging, very difficult, okay? Now, choice A, basic calcium uh, phosphate deposition disease. Uh, I've only seen this once uh, on 2CK material. Uh, this will cause a condition referred to as Milwaukee shoulder, okay? Um, which is literally uh, a joint disease of your shoulder, okay? It's fucking low yield, but I'm just telling you what it refers to. And... We can have a lengthy discussion here. You should know that you treat pseudogout and gout acutely the same way. You use NSAID and dimethacin or colchicine or steroids, okay? 
um, chronic, you are going to treat the underlying condition for pseudogout. You would treat his hemochromatosis with serial phlebotomy for hereditary hemochromatosis. For gout, obviously, you're going to use uh, xanthine oxidase inhibitors, okay, allopurinol, febuxostat, etc. Lengthy discussion. I'm going to keep these clips concise. So your take-home is an OA-like picture in a patient with um, in a patient with hemochromatosis or primary hyperparathyroidism. Answer, pseudo gout, OA, wrong fucking answer. You know the deal. I'm going to continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.